Hello and welcome to the Let's Get Real with Brenda Porch YouTube channel. My name is Brenda Porch and this is a place for women to hear stories and scriptures designed to draw you closer to God and to your Christian sisters. God's Word is so powerful, so let's study together. Now if I were to come to your house and look in your closets, what would I see? How about under your bed, your drawers, or maybe even your garage? I'm reminded of a cartoon I once saw. An old man was a walk with a walker was standing next to his son in front of a garage so full you could hardly close the door. And the caption read, One day, son, this will all be yours. <laughs> yeah. Now, there might have been a day long ago that children wanted their parents' stuff, but probably not today. Recently, we had new carpet installed in our bedroom. In order to get ready, everything had to be removed from that room. And that included all the stuff I had put under the bed and on the bottom of my closet. It's amazing what you can hide under a king-size bed. If dust is actually old skin cells, I think I had at least two or three bodies under there and junk. Oh my goodness, the junk. Hmm, okay, so you're laughing, are you? I'll bet you have places you hide things too. Why? Why, my sisters, I ask you, why? Why do we have so much stuff? Where did it come from? Why do we have it? Why would we want it? I think most of us would fall into a couple of broad categories in this scenario. You've got your, it's on sale, so I have to buy it, ladies. Now that was my mom. She once bought several sets of placemats that only had three of each kind because, well, I mean, surely someone could use them. It was a great price. <laughs> yeah, I turned out to be that somebody. It was a really good sale, so my mom had to have it. My dad used to say, I don't mind if you buy something, just where are you going to put it? Now, that sale buying also applies to bulk items. After all, you can never have too much toilet paper, right? So that would include all of you Sam's Club or Costco buying gals. Then there are those ladies who buy things because, well, they just got tired of the old stuff. So things like clothes, plates, home decor, even new and trendy foods just might find their way home with you just because you needed something new. So then what do you do with all the old stuff? Hmm, maybe we should keep it just in case. Then, of course, there are ladies who buy things because they have a real problem. Now, if you're hiding things from your family and you have piles of things with tags on them that you've never even taken out of the original bags, my sister, you have a problem. I'm not trying to be cruel, but seriously, you might need some help. Stuff, stuff, tons and tons of stuff. It piles up, it stacks up, it steals both our time and our joy. You know, for women who say that this is not our home, we're just pilgrims passing through, we sure have a lot of luggage. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying we all need to live in a tent and have no physical belongings. My point here is that the more stuff we have, the more time and attention it takes to maintain and keep up with it. One day, we might just look back at our own lives and realize that we've spent most of our time either working to get stuff, taking care of stuff, hauling stuff in and out of our homes. Then when we die, our families are left to somehow get rid of all those worldly possessions that we work so hard to obtain. Yes, God wants you to have some stuff. Living the Christian life does not mean living in sackcloth and ashes. It's actually all about priorities and balance. I believe it's healthy to stop every now and then and look around at the patterns in our lives and ask ourselves, am I headed in the right direction? After all, what we consider important and where we put our focus says a lot about us. Matthew chapter 6, verse 21. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So today, pause for just a moment and ask yourself, what is my treasure? I suspect it's not what's in those shopping bags or even under your bed. I know my junk did not bring me joy. If you're a Christian, your treasure is actually Jesus Christ. 
He should bring you joy. That's where our heart should be. I think sometimes we forget that. We get so caught up in the daily grind of life and we're going to church and we're reading our Bibles and we're talking to others about Jesus and that could just feel like one more thing we have to do. But instead, it should be something that we want to do. God's love should bring us peace. 2 John first chapter 1, verse 3. Grace, mercy, and peace will be with you from the God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. Now, the world may measure you and what you're worth by what you have, what you possess, but that's not God. God measures your hearts. Luke chapter 6, verse 45. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaks. God wants to see how much you love and how you show that love. He is concerned with how you treat your parents and how you treat your neighbors. Matthew chapter 19, verse 19. Honor your father and your mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. He's concerned about what you think about on a day-to-day -day basis. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. What is important to God is not the things of this world, God doesn't care how much stuff you've acquired over your lifetime. He wants to know how much you've shown others that you care. That's what the whole judgment scene was all about. We can read about that in Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 through 46. That's actually how Christ separated the sheep from the goats. The sheep, those that would go to heaven, had fed and clothed and visited all those who were in need. They cared about the people around them, and that should be our goal too, to love God and one another. So, if you have too much stuff, donate it, or sell it and give the money to someone who needs it. Share what you have with others. After all, you can't take it with you. We've all heard the old joke about the greedy man that was extremely wealthy, and he insisted that when he died, he take all his money with him. And so at the funeral, everyone came expecting to see his coffin lined with cash, but it wasn't. Finally, someone got brave enough to ask the widow about it, and she simply smiled and said, well, I wrote him a, je I wrote him a check. It's in his jacket pocket. Does your physical possessions distract you from what's most important, serving God and bringing others to him? While we may have lots of luggage for this leg of our journey, I don't think we'll need any of it when we get to heaven. So my friends, I want you to really consider this question. Do you have too much junk? And if you decide you do, you know what to do about it. I pray that you'll give my message from God's word some serious thought and prayer. Please like and subscribe to this page. If you want to know more about me or my Let's Get Real ministry, check out my website. The address will appear at the end of this message. So ladies, until we meet again, please never forget that God loves you and so do I.